So now in our camera settings, let's look, take a look at how to work with depth of field and render it. So in order to uh, work with the depth of field, let me just grab in uh, some object. Let me just grab in a bunch of spheres right here. So let me just drag this up. And over here, let me just uh, create copies of these just like this. So four spheres right there. Okay, so now let us work around with the depth of field. For that, I'm going to work around with the camera right here. So this is the camera, as you can see. So let me just go on to the camera view. And over here, I can focus around in an object. Right now, everything is in focus, as you can see. If I were to render this out by pressing Control R, you can see that all of them are in focus. So let's render out, I mean, let's simulate depth of field. So for that, I'm going to go into camera right here and over here you can see that you can work around with its focal length right now it's 36 so let me use a zoom size so you can work around with the sensor size as you can see right here and you can around with the focal length so i'm going to add something like 50 so that is going to be the focal length that is how you use the camera zoom lens and if you don't know uh, about uh, the focal length and everything you might want to consider taking a look at my photographic um, um, photography uh, tutorial in my YouTube channel so over here you can see that you can also control the sensor size as well just like that so I'm gonna leave all of these as it is right here the focal length in short controls the zoom level of a camera lens so I'm just going to add in 50 as normal lens right here so now once I do that I'm gonna go into the physical area and here you can see that you have two options one is for the movie camera so this gives it options like uh, you see in video cameras something like exposure and gain so if I were to turn on the exposure right here you can see that there's gain setting right here uh, which is similar to a video camera and if you were to turn off the movie camera you get ISO and set a speed just like that and if you were to movie camera start at an angle and gain just like in movie camera so let's say um, you uh, just are comfortable with photographic cameras which uh, most of the people are with um, uh, in the long run so I'm just going to go over here and here you can set the ISOs and set the speed right here but we are not going to look um, in too much of a detail right here we're going to look here in the f-stop so f-stop is the aperture size and right now it's 8.0 as you can see but if I want a blurry background I might want to go down into f-stop 1.2 or something like that but right now you don't see any chains and to see the chains you have to go to uh, the option right here and over here you can see that there's depth of field so if I were to turn this on you'll be able to see it just a bit but right now you do not see it much so if I were to increase uh, and decrease you can see that you can control the amount of blurriness over it so this is quite a real-time type of an effect so this is what you see but here you can see that the uh, spears are not being focused because of the focus area right here so if I were to get out of the camera view right here uh, you will be able to control the focus area right now the focus area is way at the end so let me just go to the top view work around with the focus area and let's say I want to focus on the second sphere right here so I'm gonna go into the camera right here and then I'm going to go over uh, into the object and let's work around with the focus distance so I can work around with this one and you can see that I can work around with the focus distance right here so let's say this is the area where I want to focus I can also go over here and click and drag this out and that's how you can control the focus distance as you can see right here so let me just drag this around here and then I'm going to go back into the camera view so I'm gonna go back here into the camera view just like that and here you can see that this is much more clearer than this out here so I'm going to go into the physical um, options right here let me increase the f stop decrease decrease it you can see that this is more focused in comparison to this and if I were to go into the object right here and then work around with the focus distance you'll be able to see that as I move along uh, the focus area as you can see moves from this side to that side right here but until and unless I render it out I cannot see the full effect so uh, if, if we were to actually talk, talk about this 0 0.31 is quite a huge aperture so anyways let me just render this out if I were to press ctrl R uh, you can see that nothing actually happens so I do see the depth of field over here on the viewport but once I render it I do not actually see anything that is because I need to enable the physical renderer and to do that I'm gonna go over here onto the settings and over here at the bottom in FX 
I'm going to enable the physical renderer. So over here, there is no physical renderer. So I need to go over here on the top, not at the bottom. So on the top, there's physical renderer right here. So let me just click on that and there is physical. So once you uh, go onto the physical, you can see that you can enable depth of field, motion blur and so forth. So we're not going to work around with much over there. So I'm just going to enable the depth of field itself. So once I enable that, now, if I were to press Ctrl R and render it out, you can see that the rendering actually happens. You can see that the front part is blurred and this part is blurred as well, while this part is sharp. But everything is white. That is because we uh, set our ISO to 200. So let us set it to 100, which simply means brightness right here. Press Ctrl R, the brightness should go down. So let me just go down into something like 50 right here, Ctrl R. That is because the aperture is quite huge right here. So let me go for something like 1.8 that might control the brightness around a bit. So you can see that it is uh, getting much more okay now uh, according to the brightness, just like that. So uh, to make it easier for us to work, I'm going to enable the interactive render reason. So let me just go over here onto interactive render reason, right? So let me just drag this up just like that. So I can work around with the aperture and the exposure. So I can turn off the exposure altogether so that it does not have effect, any effect onto it as well. So I can have a very sharp image or a very shallow depth of field right here. So let me just go on to the shallow depth of field so that you really start seeing those blurs around right there. So now if I were to select this object, move around, you can see that the other objects are blurred out while that one is very clear. So let me just go over here and there you go. You get the depth of field and everything else just like that. So over here, we, uh, like I said, we can work around with the exposure. Right now it's 50, so if I were to bring down into something like 10, maybe one, this is actually a big f-stop. So I need to increase this in size to actually work around with the um, exposure right here. So it really works like a real camera. So just like this, I can work around with this, move, move this around, just like that, and there you go. So I'm just going to go away into the camera, disable the exposure altogether so that I can have a very high level of blur. Usually, I do not want to work with this. Also, set the speed and everything else is there. Another thing that you might want to work with is vignetting right here. So vignetting really actually just um, increases and decreases the surrounding areas right here. So right now, uh, you can see that everything actually works out. So I'm just going to uh, add in a floor to give it a more lively effect. And then I'm also going to add in a physical sky so that it really looks like an environment right there. So you can really see how everything works out just like that. So this one is blur. You got the shadows and everything is blur out as well. So I'm going to uh, select my camera right here. And then these are the app stops, the exposure. Let me work around with the vignetting intensity. So I'm going to increase the vignetting intensity right here. And I can see that the edges are darker than uh, it was actually before. So if I had to increase this, you can see that it becomes much more prominent. So there you go. That's the vignetting effect and everything else. But usually I don't like to do it directly in Cinema 4D, but I like to post process it in other applications like After Effects or Premiere Pro. Also, there's a chromatic aberration, which gives a bit of a chromatic like uh, area right here. So there's some color noises right here, which uh, seems as if you shot everything in a camera right here. So I'm just going to keep this that to zero. So uh, it is actually normal. So let me just add in some kind of material right here. So let me just drag in material to all of these. So it actually looks really good right here. So let me just drag in material to all of these right here and then drag in the material to the floor as well. So I can add in an effect to it. So I'm going to go to the material right here and then let me make it a bit of reflective and let's see how the overall output actually looks like. So I'm going to add in Beckman right here as we learned in the last lesson. So everything is shiny just like that. And this is how everything looks like. So you got the reflections and everything else right there, the blur effect and everything else. So, uh, quite an, a remarkable output uh, is what you can get from using the depth of field just like this. So that is how you can use the physical renderer and the depth of field effect inside of camera settings to create the depth of field effect in renders. So hope you guys learned something as always. And as always, please like, comment, share and subscribe.